What is going on, YouTube? Welcome to 1992. We're taking you back, man. We're going to replay the 92 Royal Rumble. And I got to say, this is top two of my favorite Rumbles of all time. Some people say that this is the best Royal Rumble ever in the history of world wrestling entertainment. So let's see what happens here. Back in 1992, the championship belt was vacated after the Survivor Series match between The Undertaker and Hulk Hogan, which totally confuses me. Why did they strip The Undertaker of the belt? He won <laughs> fair and square. Oh my gosh, man. Well, I don't know if it was fair and square, but he legit won. And um, Hogan complained that um, he got a severe neck injury from that, but if you check the replay, The Undertaker, who's one of the most careful wrestlers of all time, he takes pride in not hurting who he faces. He gave him two tombstones. The second one, I know Ric Flair came in to help him out. Flair put the chair down, and Hogan's head did not hit the chair that was placed on the on the ring's canvas. And it was a perfect, perfectly executed tombstone by The Undertaker. And I don't know why Hogan complained after that his neck was hurt. So they vacated the title. I'm going on on tangents here. But I don't understand that. So then they had this idea. The winner of this Rumble is going to win the belt. And spoiler alert, Ric Flair put together one of the best performances of all time. Staying in there for 59 minutes and winning the belt. So let's see how he does. I want to tell you, man, this... Rumble had so many pops, man. Great audience here in New York. Like when Hacksaw Jim Duggan came out, um, Texas Tornado came out. But the best was when Piper came out because at that point, the ring was cleared and it was only flair in the ring. And when Piper rolled in, everybody was going bonkers and Piper's energy was just incredible. It was so fun to watch. But... Let's see how things go right here. I was reading all of your... I try to read every single one of your comments, man. I appreciate you guys so much. If you haven't subscribed, man, please subscribe. But I was reading a lot of your comments, and you guys were so... A lot of you were just so pumped up for this 92 Rumble. And somebody was like, if Flair doesn't win, it doesn't do it justice. But come on. In the real Rumble, he won. So this is all for fun. It is going to be so, so cool to see how this goes down. I got to tell you, too, there were so many eye pokes in this rumble. That was like, holy cow. I think that was like the number one move in this rumble was the eye poke. So here we go. Oh, starting off with the power slam. It's Ted DiBiase. And DiBiase has been getting unlucky recently in rumbles coming in early. And you got to give it up for the British Bulldog. But wasn't he just like juiced up, man, to the gills? He was so juiced up. This version of the Bulldog. Weren't they all juiced up at that point? But here we go. Here comes the champ, Ric Flair. <laughs> and I want to tell you, I tried my best to um, give everybody the correct color to tires. So Flair came in all black. And um, I managed to uh, change him up a little bit. Oh, look at this. Thanks for the sub, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But look at that Russian leg sweep. And the thing is, are we going to see... Oh, I was going to say, are we going to see Flair and Ted DiBiase work together against Bulldog? But let's see who's coming in now. Jerry Sags. So Jerry Sags, remember in the previous year, uh, Nobbs was in. Now they have Sags coming in, going, oh, nice. Going right after the Bulldog. The Bulldog finding a way to get out of harm's way. Nice DDT by Flair. Oh, and now Flair getting slowed down there by Sags. Here we go. Who is coming in now? Let's see, who is it going to be? And again, it's in the exact same order of the 92 Rumble. Here comes Haku. <laughs> Haku at number five. 
And you know what? Shoutouts to Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby the Brain Heen, and may they both rest in peace. But they were just so good in the booth. And the best was when Bobby the Brain got so upset that Haku started fighting Flair. Like, you know, aren't they both part of the Heenan family? But, uh, yeah, it's every man for himself, man. Every competitor for himself when it comes to these rumbles. Whoa, nice kick there by Flair. Okay, let's see who's coming in now. Shawn Michaels. And this was fresh off of his uh, departure from the Rockers. And I got to say, Shawn Michaels. Oh, what a job by the Bulldog. Shawn Michaels is the best at selling attacks, man. At selling strikes coming his way. And he was just so fun to watch inside this Royal Rumble. Shawn Michaels, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, in my opinion. And he had uh, just a top-tier performance inside this Rumble. But it was crazy because as the countdown was going down, him and Tito Santana, here comes Tito, kind of got caught up in like a little grappling match on the left side of the ring. And they both got eliminated at the same time. So here's El Matador, Tito Santana. But yeah, it was just an anticlimactic exit there for Shawn Michaels after all the great work that he did inside this 92 Rumble for him and Santana to make the exit together as the countdown was going down. It was kind of like bad timing for both of them. They should have waited. Should have waited a little bit. Here we go. Barbarian. Now, I was um, playing around with this Barbarian creation because, yeah, this, this is the correct Barbarian. Because you had the Barbarian with the face paint. But it's weird. Barbarian and Warlord ditched the face paint. Too many people were saying they look like Legion of Doom. I'm just kidding. But this is the uh, correct version of the Barbarian inside this 92 Rumble. And I wouldn't mess with him. Holy cow. He is just muscled up. And now Santana, who's got great wrestling ability, doesn't have the size advantage. Stays right in here, and here comes the Texas Tornado, and the fans just love the Texas Tornado. Great Intercontinental Champion. But when he came in, people were going bonkers. And let's see how Kerry Von Erich can do. Kerry Von Erich. He, he has a, a great mix of athleticism and power. Man. And he's <laughs> going after Haku with a right shot to the breadbasket. And then he's going to send no. Oh, Decides to go with an elbow. And look at Michaels. Oh, on Santana. We're going to see them both uh, eliminate themselves here. Wow, look at this athletic ability by Michaels. Wow, working his abs. Oh, but nice counter there by Sags. And now Santana's got to be careful. Big shot there by the Tornado. And now Santana. Nice job by Santana. Ducking under and circling. Great job anticipating that strike. But Santana still in some trouble. And Bobby the Brain Heen is probably freaking out right now because Haku and Flair are battling it out. Ric Flair. Man, I love how Ric Flair's hair was so white back then. How old was Flair? Man. He was just, he seemed to be just old for such a long time. But <laughs> he is such a good guy, man. So fun to watch. And um, Flair exited the ring a bunch of times in this Rumble. And you didn't really see a lot of that um, in previous Rumbles before this one. But Flair would exit under that bottom rope quite a lot in this one. But you know another thing? Macho Man had such a feud with Jake the Snake. And that it spilled over into this Rumble. And Macho Man eliminated Jake the Snake. And then he eliminated himself by going outside the ring and going after him. But apparently the Royal Rumble rule is you must get thrown over the top by an opponent. So they allowed him to come back. Is that the rule? Because in this one, Savage got a second chance. But in this game, we've seen it in WWE 2K22. Um, if you jump out of the ring, you're eliminated. Even if you, if you do it yourself. But anyway... Back to the action. Look at that signature power slam by the Bulldog. And Kerry Von Erich decides to roll to the baseline here. And nice job there by Flair. 
The thing is if Flair is going to do it here, if he's going to go coast to coast, and we've seen guys go coast to coast, you got to be uh, an opportunist. You got to pace yourself. You got to find your, your way out of traffic and allow guys to slowly eliminate themselves. And look at this. Is Michael's going to go? Oh, Michael's got the strength disadvantage at this point. How is he going to stay in here? Is he going to do it? Oh, he's struggling. Look at Santana. Santana was hesitating to go after Haku, but now he's going to try. I don't think Santana's got the strength. He's known for the flying forearm. He's known for utilizing his technical wrestling abilities, but not his strength. And it backfired on him. And now, oh no, Flair's got him. And are we going to see Haku? No. Haku not helping him out. As these competitors staying in the ring as best as they can. And now Michaels. Michaels got to be careful. Nice job grabbing the foot. Oh, a nice clothesline by Sean. And now Santana. Flair back in the corner. But people forgot about Flair. This is good for all you Ric Flair fans. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> the best was at the end of this. Oh, a shot to the Hulkamaniacs. And Flair was dishing that uppercut to the Hulkamaniacs quite a bit in this rumble. But the best was when Flair won it. He was getting interviewed by Mean Gene, Bobby the Brain Heen, and was so happy. Mr. Perfect, who was in his corner, was so happy. But then at the end, somebody decided, oh, there goes Michaels. Somebody decided to light a cigarette. And <laughs> Mean Gene was like, put that cigarette out. I don't know if that was scripted, but let me know who decided to light one up. It was probably Jake the Snake. But anyway, that was so random how that happened. Or like he would address it in the interview, you know what I mean? But Shawn Michaels is done. The British Bulldog is done. Flair is still in there. Here we go. Let's see what happens right here. Oh, I'm telling you, the Barbarian, he is putting on a... A really nice showing to kick off this rumble. And if he could throw Sags out, everybody's got to watch out for the Barbarian. And he's struggling a little bit. You got the Texas Tornado working on the back of Tito. And now Flair taking a bit of a break and then going after the Big Fish and Barbarian. Oh, oh, nice head movement by Haku. And now Haku's going to choke slab him. He's going to get it done. Oh, he gets it done. Here comes the Repo Man. Now, is this is Smash, right, from Demolition? So, is this Smash from Demolition? So, what happened to Demolition? They really folded it before 92? I thought they were around for a little bit longer. But after 92, everything just seemed to change ever so quickly inside the WWE. And you'll see it on this channel as we progress into the mid-90s. You'll see how, like... The roster's changed, big time. Oh, nice job by Kerry Von Erich, staying in there. Flair thought he had him. Here comes my aunt, I mean Greg the Hammer Valentine. Oh, there goes the Barbarian, what a job by El Matador. And here comes the Hammer. And yeah, just how I said in the beginning, I tried my best to match up the attires with the actual rumble that occurred in 92. So Greg the Hammer was sporting the red trunks Tito Santana was sporting the green pants with the pink, uh, what do you call it? The long socks, I guess you would say. But nice job by Santana. Oh, Flair's got to be careful. Don't want to charge forward. Oh, Flair. See, that's what I love about Ric Flair. Very technical. Knows when to take chances, but doesn't do things to put him in bad spots too often and even in this game <laughs> Ric Flair is playing his cards right right here right now let's see who's coming in now let's see who's it gonna be oh how about this oh Nikolai Volkov and he got the worst him Skinner and oh there goes Santana him Skinner and the repo man whoa what happened to the Texas tornado there um, but yeah those guys got the worst reception when they came in but how about flair he's looking big and buff go after the repo man rick he's going after him oh he injured the oh he injured that hamstring but after working together with haku they're now fighting against each other and the repo man 
with a nice move on Flair. And the Texas Tornado has now become possessed. Oh my gosh. Don't tell me this is going to happen here. When we do these videos, it's one and done. But the Texas Tornado took a horrible fall. And now he's just walking in the corner. Oh no. And now Flair could be in trouble. Oh, nice counter by Flair. But what is going on with the Texas Tornado? <laughs> we gotta keep an eye on the Tornado. <laughs> he decided to hit the treadmill. Here comes the big boss man at 13. He decided to hit the treadmill. Oh, and then he's vanished. What shenanigans? Lock your front doors. That was the wildest thing I've ever seen. Oh my goodness. That just gave me shivers down my spine. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> oh my gosh. It ain't even Halloween. Holy cow, man. We got to forget that just happened. Sleep with the nightlight tonight. But anyway, Volkov. Oh no, could Flair. Oh, Flair's done. Oh, Rick Flair is done. And I was hoping he would go coast to coast. Well, not really coast to coast. But that just, that's sad, man. That is absolutely sad. Oh, that is so bad, but that's how it goes. I want to talk about Hercules just real quick. When he came in, I didn't even recognize it was Hercules. His hair was longer. He was actually bigger and thicker than uh, what we saw in previous years. He did not look well, in my opinion. He did not look well at all. And he was gassed out. When he came in, he started hitting guys up with body shots. He looked gassed out within a minute of being inside the ring. Oh, big boss man. Nice job. And every time I see the big boss man, I think of the arcade game WWF Superstars. My team was, it was either Savage and the big boss man or the Ultimate Warrior and the big boss man. It was a tag team arcade game. Here comes Piper and Rowdy Piper at 15. Rolling on in. And I was trying to find a Piper with longer hair because he had longer hair um, in this one, but I couldn't find one. He's got the uh, the short Jack Tripper haircut from Three's Company. Remember that show? But anyway, let's see. Is Haku going to be in some trouble? To the corner he goes. The Hammer looking to eliminate Sags. And previously, the Hammer lasted a long time, but in this Rumble in real life, he didn't last very long at all. Nice job there by Haku. Oh, Volkov. Wow. That's like a JBL clothesline. Oh my gosh, man. A lot of force behind that one. You gotta be careful with Volkov. Now he's picking up Piper and throwing him down. Oh, nasty headbutt by the big boss, man. And then flipping him to the side. And Piper in the in the 92 Rumble, he lasted a long, long time. And let's see how long he lasts here. Good job, good reversal there on Hercules. And now the big boss man going after Volkov. And now Piper, oh wow, I'm surprised Piper didn't get thrown over the ropes there. Piper with, oh nice. He thought about a sleeper hold and then decided to slam him down. And the repo man, he's thinking about his his ex-girlfriend, man, crying in the corner. But he's back. That was interesting. How the repo man just started getting thoughts of uh, an old relationship and looked like he was weeping in the corner and on the turnbuckle. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. Here we go. Now repo man, his head's just not in it. His head is just not in it. And Sags gonna do him a favor. Sags and the big boss man. Oh no, you can't be thinking about the ex-girlfriend when you're inside this ring. And the repo man is done. And Greg the Hammer, oh, they worked together and then Sags backstabbed him. Look at all these, I love how these guys are working together. And the Hammer, oh yeah, hammering it down. Going after Haku and Nikolai. And now, nice job, yes. When you're in a full lather like the hammer is you can get out of those tough situations and he did and now hercules oh oh nice little fake by the hammer oh no 
but he was admiring his handiwork for way too long. And Volkov eliminated him. Volkov's had some key eliminations. He was a key part in the elimination of Ric Flair. And now he's still in it. Are we going to see Volkov shock the YouTube world and win the 92 Royal Rumble? Here comes Roberts. Jake the Snake. Roberts. Jake the Snake. Oh, man, that hesitation. That hesitation got him. And now he's going after Haku. Atomic drop. And now, oh, I'm telling you, Jake the Snake's got a nasty left-handed clothesline. Oh. Oh, no. Save him. Nice job by Piper. Here we go. Who's coming in at this point? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I was talking about the pop, man. Duggan? Oh, man, everybody loves him. How can you not love Hacksaw Jim Duggan? He came in with that 2x4. I love how he just dropped it. <laughs> like, he just let go of it as he was coming in the ring. <laughs> you guys got to go back and watch it, man. It's way too awesome. But right now, oh, he's got to be careful. Nice job by Piper. And this could be the end of Haku. No, Haku is still in it. Who is coming in now? Two... Here comes IRS. Erwin R. Scheister. Erwin R. Scheister. And oh my God, I've never seen somebody sweat. Uh, I've never seen somebody sweat in a wrestling match like this guy. With the dress shirt on. He's already stunned. He's already stunned. Oh, nice job by Duggan. And shout outs to... IRS, man, that's um, Bray Wyatt's papa. That is Bray Wyatt's papa. How cool would that be if IRS wins this? Here comes Jimmy Snuka. Jimmy Superfly Snuka. Coming in. And when he came in, people booed him. They knew about him even in the 90s. They kind of had a groan. The New York fans, when, they came, when he came in, they were like, oh, not this guy. But nice job there by Duggan. I'm watching Duggan. Duggan's got some size on him. Nice. And Duggan's got the experience. He's won. He won the first one. It was only 20-man rumble. But still, he has that victory under his belt. And that was one of the most shocking. What was the most shocking rumble victories? That was one of the most shocking just because you, didn't, you would never have thought that Duggan would come out victorious with one of those rumbles but that's what made it fun to watch because you're like what how did Doug it with but yeah let me know in the comments below I can't wait to see you guys in the chat I always try to make the best effort commenting on almost all of your posts there goes Haku what a job by Duggan and now Duggan going after Snuka giving him a nice little headshot and now are we going to see Shyster? no I'm telling you, Volkov is a beast. He's thrown out Erwin R. Scheister. And now he's going after Duggan. Duggan and Piper could be a tag team. They must have the same attire. Nice job by Jake the Snake. And look at this, the tag team working together. And now against each other, oh my gosh. And now Snuka coming in to break it up. Incredible. Oh no, and now Piper's done. Back body drop there. Oh no, wow, Snooka's cleaning house. Snooka's cleaning house. Duggan and Piper out of there. Now we're down to three as this rumble continues on. And Volkov winding up and connecting. Okay, here we go. Oh, nice shot by Jake the Snake. Here comes The Undertaker at 20. And I felt bad, man, for The Undertaker. He should have kept the belt. Or at least give him a 30 entry, you know? Oh, nice. That's cool. But this was a young Undertaker. I think he was like 25 years old at the time. And um, the ultimate no-nos, I guess, in the business is don't hurt, you know, the golden boy, Hulk Hogan. But he, I don't think he ever did. Like I said in the beginning, Undertaker's just such a careful performer. 
What was going through Hogan's mind, man? Did he really get injured? Did he lie about it? Let me know in the comments. Let's spark a discussion. But here comes Savage. Macho man, let me tell you something right now. Jake the Snake, I'm coming for you, brother. Let's see how Savage does. And I love how Macho Man always had such colorful attire. So he came rolling in in some shiny purple. And right away, is he going to go right after him? And he was relentless in the 92 Rumble, going right after Jake the Snake and taking it outside as well. Here comes the Berserker. Huss. 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 Look at this Snooka. Snooka going to get another elimination? No, he's not. Berserker kind of looked like uh, the heel version of Hillbilly Jim. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, is he going to slam him? No way. Not under the Undertaker's watch right here. And when did the Undertaker ditch the gloves? I felt like um, when he faced Hogan, even in this rumble, he kept on messing with the gloves trying to keep them on. It must have been so hard for him to perform trying to keep those oven mitts on. Here comes Virgil. And everybody loved Virgil when he came in. At this point, did he part ways with the Million Dollar Man? Back in the day, I'm like, Virgil is too buff and too scary to be a manager, man. That guy should be a wrestler. And eventually he did get in there. And he's, th oh, look at this. Pressing. Savage and dropping him down. Nice counter there by Snuka. Nice left hand to clothesline by Jake the Snake. Okay, here we go. Who's coming in now? Colonel Mustafa. Colonel Mustafa. And was M Mustafa was the Iron Sheik, wasn't he? Look at this. Oh, nice move by Jake. He still has the wrist. He still has the wrist. Oh, no. Watch out, Tombstone. By the Undertaker. And in this game, pretty much every time he lands the Tombstone... He like needs like a couple seconds to recover. I'm not. Ta I'm talking about the Undertaker. He's just slow to react after. And now he's going after Virgil. And could the Berserker? Oh, Jake the Snake, saving Nikolai Volkov. Oh, and then again with that left-handed clothesline, dropping that left knee there by Jake the Snake. And now Jake going after Virgil, working that wrist. Look at this strength. Oh, and dropping him right down. Oh, nice three-piece combo there by Jake the Snake Roberts. Working against Virgil in the center of your ring right here. Virgil now got him in a power slam, gets him. Undertaker eliminates Volkov. And Taker looking to take back his belt. Man, which I felt like he should have kept. Yeah, I really want to know the deep dive justification why they stripped him of his belt. Oh, watch out, Virgil. He's got him down with authority, a choke slam. And now Jake the Snake. Oh, nice shoulder block there. Oh, trying to drop the leg. Undertaker misses it. And look at Super, Super Fly. Holy cow. That was cool, man. That was cool to see. And what's wrong with Savage? Savage getting his head knocked around there. People are walking all over him. Savage passed out in the middle of the ring. This is tough to watch. Macho Man's my favorite wrestler of all time, by the way. And how about this? Mustafa getting choke slammed on the apron. Here comes Rick Martel at 25. We're nearing the end of this rumble. Oh my gosh, man. I'm having just such a great time. These nostalgic rumbles are my favorite to make, man. I don't know if you could tell by the tone of my voice, but it just brings me such joy. And I'm actually quite sad that we're nearing the end. I want to do it again. Um, but when I do these videos, I always say it. I always do one recording. It makes for unpredictable content, which... I think is entertaining for you, the viewer, <laughs> but uh, so fun. But we'll just move on to the next year in a few days.
But uh, right now, let's see who is going to win this. Taker looking in control here. Oh, nice job by Rick Martel. Rick Martel with a great counter. And now going after the lower back of Taker. And Savage could be out of here. Here comes the Hulkster. Oh no, Undertaker's done and Savage is done. And here comes Hogan. And Hogan's probably happy. He doesn't have to deal with the Undertaker or Macho Man. And Undertaker and Savage are looking around saying this ain't fair. But this rumble must go on. As now Virgil. Oh, double punch right there by Snuka and Hogan. And Snuka with a nice hip toss. Being outsized there, it didn't matter. And now a battle of punches between Jake. There's a, there that eye poke that I was talking about. Jake the Snake and Snuka going back and forth. Nice knee to the back there by Martel. Hogan seems fresh, deciding to work the Berserker. Well, but he wants Virgil for some reason. Virgil needs to survive here, react quick. Yes, looks like Virgil's in the clear. Now Hogan's going after Martel. Oh, but Jake the Snake's like, I got it, brother. Here comes Skinner. Are we gonna see Skinner win it? Come on, I wanna see Skinner going all the way. Look at this guy. Skinner, oh, nice job. And down. Holy smokes, Virgil on the receiving end of a right hand. Virgil's got to survive. Skinner's getting the better of the Hulkster, isn't he? He is definitely getting the better of Hulk Hogan. Is Hogan relaxing in the corner? Well, not really relaxing, trying to recover. Look at that athleticism by Skinner. Here comes Sergeant Slaughter at 28. Sergeant Slaughter at 28. You know when Slaughter, when I was watching it, uh, wrestling as a kid, oh no, there goes the Berserker. I was so confused with Slaughter being a heel because in G.I. Joe, man, he was the Hulk Hogan, so to speak, of G.I. Joe, man. He was the leader. And why would they bring him in as a bad guy in wrestling? I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. But right now, here we go. Sid Justice. Sid Justice. Call him Psycho Sid. Call him Sid Vicious. You name it. There it goes. Here we go. Oh! Jake the Snake went for an opportunity of a lifetime. And Hogan's done. What a job by Snuka. Are you kidding me? The Hulkster is done. He's, what is he going to blame it on now? Hogan's going to stick around and try to distract Sy uh, Sid Justice here. And try to get him eliminated. But could this be Sid's opportunity? It looked like Sid was in the driver's seat. When he eliminated Hulk Hogan, here comes the Warlord. And then all he had to do was beat down a, an exhausted Ric Flair. And then Hogan got in the way of that. And now this could be Sid Justice's opportunity as the Warlord coming in at 30. And dropping him down. What a rumble this has been. A lot of twists and turns. A lot of surprises. But that's what makes it fun. Snook has been just... I was gonna use a, a K word, but I won't, but he's been um, doing really well. Um, but I wanna see him eliminated. Snuka, get out of there, brother. <laughs> but we'll soon see, no, not Skinner. Not Skinner. No. And we're down to the final four. Oh, nice boot there by Slaughter. As now Slaughter going after Snuka. You got the Warlord and Sid Justice. Look how big the Warlord is. Oh, Warlord's still in it. The Warlord's still in it. Sid Justice holding on to that hamstring. And now, what is up with these guys just hanging out of the corner? Oh. And now Snuka. Well, what's Snuka going to do now? Oh, nice job by Snuka putting his arms up. Oh, and a big shot there by Sid Justice. Oh, Snuka being outweighed here. Is he going to be able to get the Warlord out? He's got that elimination move where he could pick guys up and just throw them out. Here we go, the final three. Sid Justice, Slaughter, 
and super flight Jimmy Snuka. And Snow. Oh, oh, is he gonna give him the? Oh, he decides not to. Oh, Snuka's kind of limping. To the corner he goes. Slaughter now going after Sid Justice. Sid was going. Oh, here we go. Looks like Snuka's gonna help him out. Is he gonna help him out? He is. Oh. Wow, it was almost looked like the ropes were breaking. Oh, Sid's still in it. What a job by the big guy. Staying in it. Doesn't matter if he's getting double teamed, man. This guy's gonna find a way. He's got that upper body strength. Oh, he's gotta watch out for Snuka. So yeah, Snuka came in at 19. And he's still hammering away at his competition here. But look how tiny Snuka is against these two big boys. He's got to keep on them. He's got the advantage when it comes to the conditioning department. And now he's throwing, oh, but not on the strength department. And he got flattened out. Seems like Sid and Slaughter just want to battle each other here. A lot of their attention's going towards each other and not Superfly Jimmy Snuka. And now Slaughter trying to hang on. Who's going to be crowned the new champion? Oh, nice. Oh. Here we go. Watch out, Snuka. Oh, Snuka. Oh. It looked like Snuka was going to be out of there. But again, Sid coming in and stopping things. Here we go. Power bomb. Nice reversal. And Slaughter seems to be at a tired state here. Knees to the midsection by Snuka. Oh, nice. Oh. I thought Snuka was going to get that elimination on Sid with the clothesline, but decides to go with an elbow, a 12 to 6 elbow. And now Snuka in the driver's seat. And he's got his signatures and finishers on hand. Is he going to use it? He's the only one that has them, if you see on your bottom of your screen. He's got two finishers ready to go and a signature. Oh, look at this. Was that a fall away slam by Slaughter? And now Sid Justice, he is really slowing down. Good clothesline. Here we go, what a final three. These guys working hard. And now, oh, and again, the third wheel. And now this is, this is Snooka's, that's his move, man. What is up with that? And now we're down to the final two. Sid Justice staring down Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Can Snuka find a way? Oh, man. To cue the epic victory here. But he gets thrown out by Sid Justice just like that. Clean the hands off, brother. This is the man that should have won it in 92. If Hogan didn't stick his nose in dirty places as Sid Justice secures the victory that is crazy how about that man how about that <laughs> what a great what a great replay this is too i've never seen a replay this long wow shout outs to 2k that's great stuff wow there you go you see it twice sid justice is the new heavyweight champion yeah i wonder if you could um Make a rumble where the winner gets strapped with the belt. But uh, I got to look into that. Let me know in the comments below. But thank you guys so much for being here. I had such a blast making this video. And I want to say thank you for the support. And stay tuned, man, because in like two or three days, we will move up another year and we'll relive the glorious days of rumble wrestling. All right, guys, it's Ricky J. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Take care.